Um, Brent Bashera, uh, when we first met many, many years ago, it was like we knew we were going to be important to each other. He's important to me. I don't know how important I am to him, but um, the, uh, he is my friend. He is a mentor to me. He's a guide. Uh, you are one of the most extraordinary humans I've ever met. You always vibrate on a high level, and that's a, the vibration is a level of you know kindness, compassion, love, caring, sharing, all the good juicy stuff. Uh, he's going to tell a little bit of a story, but he's going to take us through an exercise. Uh, he is an Afghanistan war vet who served as Special Forces, uh, Navy bomb disposal for 24 years. Uh, opened his website, you see Global Citizen, Student of Life, Explorer, Scientist, Firehose Philosopher. I, I don't know if you're going to talk about your invention, but may I say, he it came into vision, but he invented the sharpest knife tip in the world. It's a combat knife, and it's really significant. He's a big star when he goes to Vegas, by the way. He's like in the knife world. Uh, he's really an extraordinary human being. And what I love most of all, and his wife is sitting right here, is I love their love and just relationships and how you take it so seriously because business is just a series of relationships, isn't it? At home. And anyway, it's a beautiful thing. You are so well-rounded in my world. Love you. Brent Pichera, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for that, Kathy. Uh, I just want to say that Newfoundlanders have been leading the way for hundreds of years. We've been COVID friendly since the 1600s. Look at Mummers, right? We've been COVID friendly. Yeah, right. So who's the most important person in your world? Well, the pilot says to put your own mask on first. So uh, what's really neat is, uh, just a little correction on that one, Kathy, not the sharpest tip, but the strongest tip. Strongest, right. strongest that's okay. You're the but sharpest knife in the drawer, right? I forgot. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. <laughs> so I've always said uh, that we've been living in amazing times. But right currently, though, but it seems we're living in uncertain and trying times. Uh, regardless of the, the, the uncertain times that we're living in right now, the most important thing that we can do for ourselves and for society and for others is to simply be the best version of ourselves mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally. What I'm gonna be sharing with you today are the, the technology of a biological, a biological technology of breath work, okay? It's a hot tip, cool trick, and a conscious tool for our toolbox to allow us to deal and process thoughts and feelings of the past, but also of today's current events. I was in the military for 24 years, where I served as a Navy bomb disposal diver. I served in the Special Forces and in the infantry. I had a fantastic military career. I was in exceptional shape. I had to be to deal with the, the rigors of the job, but also for the occurrences of the day. But to be in that, those elite military units comes at a cost. It cost me physically, it cost me mentally, and it cost me my first marriage, uh, where I'd chosen my career over my family and I was separated from my children for over nine years. I was on medications for uh, seven of those years for the stress, for the anxiety, the depression, the guilt for having left my family, but also for being responsible for people's lives on a daily basis. When I talked to the military psychologist, they said, you know, you're just gonna have to learn to deal with it, but never gave me any tips or tricks or tools to sort it out, just pills. Uh, after I retired from the military, I talked to my civilian doctor and, and they said, you know, Brent, people try to get off those pills, but they usually go back on them, so you might as well just stay on them without any option of an exit strategy. When I left the military, I had a breakdown. I was uh, in the fetal position for three days and then I was later to go on to suffer a great personal tragedy with the loss of my 30-year-old son, Carl, to a motorcycle accident. So one lesson I've learned in life is it's not what happens to us that matters, it's how we choose to respond to it and act on it that does. Since my retirement, I've had the luxury of study. I've used my military skill set of pattern recognition to study the patterns of life, to study the application of life, the mechanism of perception, as in perception is reality. I've studied and learned that our thoughts lead to our feelings, our feelings lead to our actions, and our actions lead to our results. Thoughts and feelings happen on the inside, results happen on the outside, and the bridge between the inside world and the outside world is action. If we do nothing happens, uh, what we put out is what we get back, and if it is to be, it's up to me. So I've also learned that, uh, well, let's just back that up for a second. What is a thought? What is a thought? What did you have for breakfast? Right? You, some of you might have seen cheese on toast on a plate. Well, that's a thought of the past. What are we going to have for supper? Some of us are gonna be having pasta and cheese on a plate, and that's the thought of the future. Thoughts 
of the past and the future are simply pictures in our mind, images that we, we have. So, there's, so if we have shitty thoughts, we're going to have shitty feelings. If we have good thoughts, we're going to have good feelings. Well, I just want to share with you that shitty is actually oh, an acronym that I've come with, up with, and it's simply our stories, our history, our injuries, our traumas, experience, events, and emotions, right? And that's what, when I say the word shitty, that, that's all it is, is that's just our stuff, our stories, our history and such. So, and and th that stuff can get stuck inside of us. I've also learned that feelings are like flatulence. No different than a burp, shit, sneeze, fart, laugh, orgasm. Better out than in, as Shrek always says. And it's a process of the body. No different than digestion, circulation, or respiration. A process of the body. And we can impede that process by simply by getting bunged up, either through my mind or my actions, I can impede that process. So if I hang on to a number two or a number one for too long, it's going to start to bung me up and, and impact my experience of the present moment. That's just simply the math of it. But also I've learned that we're being civilized to death with technology. All the bells, dings, whistles, and screens constantly going ding, 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 bing, 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 bing. Well, that's causing little cortisol, little, little epinephrine, and little adrenaline releases in the body. So just let, let me recap here. Uh, what, are, what are we dealing with here? We can be berated and, uh, and have our experience of the present moment limited by shitty, shitty thoughts of the past. Mm -hmm. We can also be berated and debilitated by shitty thoughts of the future, fear, doubt, worry, lack, and scarcity. We can also be uh, uh, berated by our current uh, events, by the, the deregulation of all the, the technology, the civilized death, the bells, dings, and whistles which can cause issues in our body like adrenal fatigue, things like autoimmune issues, such as fibromyalgia, lupus, Lyme's, Crohn's, Addison's, Raynaud's, arthritis, COPD, diabetes, obesity, and some cancers, okay? But hey, we've got options. We've got tools, biological superpowers, biological technology that we can take advantage of. So what I'm gonna be sharing with you is two breaths, biological technology and a superpower that we can take advantage of. It's a hot tip, cool trick that we can utilize. It's free, all right? The breath is very important. It's the first thing we do in life and it's the last thing we do upon retiring from this material world. So one breath I'm gonna teach you is a yoga breath. Four, four breaths, four beats in, eight breaths out, okay? And it's designed to relax, chill out the body, slow down the epinephrine, slow down the adrenaline, chill us out, make us feel calm, cool, and relaxed. The other breath I'm gonna uh, share with you is the Wim Hof breathing the Wim Hof breath, and it's to do the exact opposite. It's actually to ignite and activate the fight flight response in the body to snap us out of the chronic trance that we're in through our, our daily lives, the chronic trances and stress of the cortisol and epinephrine. So what's this Wim Hof? Well, Wim Hof is a man, he's an adventurer. He's a Dutch man from the Netherlands called the Iceman, and because he can, he says everyone can, okay? He's broken 27, uh, over 27 records, mostly due to cold exposure. He's a beautiful human being, and I, I've studied under him personally. So what the Wim Hof breath is, it's 30 breaths, and at the end of it is going to be a retention. Now, just to remind everyone, we don't do breath work when we're in water or we're driving or we're on stairs where we can cause harm to ourselves or others, okay? Because there's a potential... <laughs> Good note, <laughs> safety point, because uh, we can have a potentially of fainting and or blacking out and we wouldn't, wouldn't want to do that in the water because we will certainly drown. So what I'd like us to do now is simply just uh, get comfortable, get relaxed, dial in, tune in, turn on, get comfortable, put one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. Now just simply witness and observe what's going on in your body. Where are you breathing from? What's its strength? What's its quality? The quality of our breath specifically determines the quality of our life. Now the Wim Hof breath is gonna be 30 breaths in, we're gonna breathe from our belly to our chest to our head. Belly, chest, head. And we're gonna do this here shortly. I've got a little metronome because we have to breathe hard enough, fast enough to activate that fight flight response to snap us out of that trance, okay? So one, the beauty part about the the method though is that it, it snaps us out of that trance and it helps, it reduces inflammation, suppresses inflammation in the body. It also uh, activates anti-inflammatory uh, qualities, suppressing inflammation as well. Because inflammation is the root result of dis-ease. Look at that word, dis-ease, the uneasy <coughs> that we create. And again, chronically, it can deregulate our body and where our body starts to eat itself from the inside out. So what I'd like to do is just take a big breath in from our belly to our chest or our head. Let it go. Full breath in. 
Let it go. Full breath in. Now fully out. Deeply in. And let it go. That's it. I just want you to now just let it go. Not fully out, just letting it go. Giving it no mind. I want you to make it like a wave. Follow along to the beat because we have to breathe hard enough and fast enough. If you feel lightheaded, dizzy, nauseated, or stuff like that, just slow down your breath. Okay, so we're gonna do 30 breaths. At the end of the breath, I'm just gonna say five more, four, three, two, one. Then we're just gonna let go and we're just gonna simply hold our breath. And we're gonna hold that breath for about a minute or so. And just watch what happens on the inside of the body, okay? So we're gonna begin that now. And let's see if this, can you hear that? Out, so fully in and out. In and out, deeply in. Letting go, fully in, letting go, fully in, letting go. That's it, keep it going. Follow along to the beat, that's it. Keep it going. Deeply in, letting go, fully in, letting go. That's it, you're doing good. As Wim says, when we give our best, we get our best. That's it, keep it going. Fully in, letting go. Fully in, letting go. Deeply in, letting go. Fully in. Ten more. That's it. Keep it going. Keep it going. That's it. Five more. Two more, one more, last one, fully in, let go and stop. Simply hold your breath, simply hold, witness what's going on in the body. You might be experiencing temperature changes, lightheaded, tingling, looseness in the body. These are all signs and symptoms of oxygen roaming freely throughout the body, activation of the nervous system. You've raised your oxygen levels, lowered your acidity, changed your alkalinity, um, raised your oxygen, lowered your, CO, uh, sorry, lowered your CO2, raised your oxygen, and lowering your acidity, all deactivating pain receptors. The health benefits from this will last five and six hours. There's no need to force. The whole approach to the Wim Hof method is a gradual approach. When one feels the urge to breathe, they simply breathe fully in and hold that for 10 to 15 seconds. And we'll do that in five, four, three, two, one, breathe fully in. Now squeeze belly toward chest or head. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And we'll hold that for 10 to 15 seconds here. That's it. That's it. And we'll let that go in five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Just breathe normal. Now again, the Wim Hof method, if you go to wimhofmethod.com, is based on three pillars: mindset, breath work, and gradual cold exposure. The next breath we're going to do is the yoga breath. This yoga breath, uh, there's many yoga breaths out there. This one I really like. It, it, it's really good for chilling out and relaxing. And what's nice about this is it's a breath that we can do anywhere. It's just designed to chill us out. Before going into a meeting, after getting out of a meeting, right, we can just do uh, this simple breath. Now, I've got this little drum beat that I've come up with, and we're just going to follow along with it. It's in for four beats and out for eight beats. And I like to use the Ujjayi breath from yoga, where uh, we just tight, slightly constrict the back of our throat. So it's just inhale for four and out for eight. And we'll be begin that in five, four, three, two, one. Right. In, two, three, out, two, three. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six, and in, two, three, four, five, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and in. So just keep following along. So what we're doing now, what we've talked about is 
The title of my talk was The Great Escape in Data Breaks. But are we really taking data breaks? Are we setting a timer to, take, to create breaks in our life? Are we, is, is social media, is the Facebook, is the gram, is the tweet really uh, helping us out when it seems to be adding more, more technology to our life? It's adding more uh, dings, bells, whistles, and screens. Is that really helping us? Remember, you're the most important person in your world. Uh, I find that uh, in these times of uncertainty that it, it, it pays to be the most important person in our life and to take care of ourselves through yoga, mindset, breath control. These are tips and tricks that I've used for myself to help heal and deal with the processes of my shitty thoughts from the past, but also help me heal or deal with the daily occurrences. Uh, there is a path to our peace of mind, there is a path to our understanding, but it comes with a warning warning that there might be a little bit of work involved. But once we truly commit to that path, that path of our peace of mind is relatively short because the accomplishments of our goals is assured the moment we commit ourselves to create a life worth living. You know, you guys have been a fantastic audience. Uh, if it is to be, it's up to me, ye and we. Have a great Navy Day. Thank you for your time. Amazing. Um, thank you so much. I think I'll tell you what, going into my afternoon of times, uh, to close my eyes and actually take a few breaths was definitely a value. And Joella, I know you know what I'm talking about. So, any questions for the man? Any thoughts or considerations? Or are we also zenned out that we're feeling great? <laughs> like, I think we underestimate, you know, the value of the breath. And I just wanted everyone to know that you taught me in the, early in the, in the pandemic mm -hmm. how to do the Wim Hof breathing. And it takes 11 minutes every day. But it is the one thing that anchors me to the earth. And uh, mm -hmm. I thought it is, it's extraordinary. But uh, you guys, just with, it, with Brent, he's uh, Wim Hof. He's, uh, he's the one who dives into the ice every day. Uh, and uh, I don't know, you were up to five minutes holding your breath, I yeah. think. Uh, you still are right now. No, yeah, wonderful, uh, wow. extraordinary. But it's really that good that breathing is all good for the body. I didn't yeah. realize. And yeah. if you have more questions or, or questions, you can go to the Wim Hof Method.com. Wim Hof's got three free lessons on the site. I've also started a tribe here in Newfoundland called the Newfoundland Winter Tribe, where mm. us ice aficionados like to get out and, and swim all year round. You know, I was in the pond today, it's a beautiful seven degrees. And or if you want to get in contact with me, you can go to uh, my website, besh.ca. Thank you. Dave, you have a question? I was just going to say, uh, with Wim Hof, um, how do you help people who are in the process of doing the breath work? How many rounds do you do uh, every day? Well, I, I do three rounds. The, the, the technique's designed for three rounds of breath work. And the, the beauty of that is the health benefits last five and six hours afterwards. Hmm. And about the cold exposure, you don't have to be uh, uh, a nut like myself by sitting in cold frozen ponds. You can just simply dial down the hot water and just get a cool, refreshing uh, uh, cold water exposure just in our shower. Because you're going to have a hot shower anyways. Why not have a, a cold one at the end of it to seal our little pores? It's good for the skin. It's great for the hair. And also the selfie is amazing. I just got to say. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's called hormetic stresses. When we expose ourselves to those stresses on a daily basis, we can get those shock proteins, those hormetic shock proteins from the cold or the heat. But I don't have a sauna, so I've got a pond, so that's where I spend my time. Hmm. Any more Amazing. questions? Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Cheers.